Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr., and this is Real True Street Crime. And I want to go back into a mule. A mule is someone who's in another country, and the big fella smuggles, uses him to smuggle the drugs into America. A mule is a smuggler who is used by the big fella in another country to get the drugs in America. Usually if a mule get busted, they will deport him back to his country. Generally, they do not lock them up and give them time for any real time. They use them to try to get you. They use a mule to tell him, I'm going to let you go home, but you deliver this package to wherever you was going to take it to. I want you to know something else. Drugs, when they are in the other country, they are worth nothing. When drugs are in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Lebanon, the drugs are worth nothing. At that time when the fat man got out of jail and him in Wake was smuggling out of Thailand, Keys was only about $12,000 of a 90% pure China white. But you got to smuggle it back into the country. Understand that drugs don't cost anything. In other countries, they damn near throw it away because it's worthless. Other citizens in other countries do not purchase and buy drugs like we do here in America. America is the biggest drug selling hub in the world for all drugs, whether prescription, whether illegal. America is the biggest consumer of narcotics. Please understand that. So you might go in another country and find something for love and you can't believe you found pure white, pure China white for such a cheap price. But now you got to get it back in America and that ain't no easy feat. Smuggling through customs because I want y'all to know something about custom agents. Custom agents can smell you and know if you are dirty. Custom agents are so good, they can smell you and know if you're dirty. And that's a fact. You all don't really realize how good custom agents are. You can sweat the wrong way and they know you dirty. So they are very experienced people when you coming through that border, trying to come through there with narcotics, like out of Thailand, which the fat man in Richard Wakefield was smuggling out of Thailand. This is how you get super rich. Anytime you sitting in America and somebody's serving you, just know that package has been pushed through many hands and many people have had to put a tag on it. So it's been tagged quite a few times before you get it. But what you want is to keep the quality up there. You don't want it to be hit every time it change hands you don't want the package to be hit every time it change hands and that's the thing of these guys out here why they not getting no money because they never learned the craft of smuggling they always was happy with sitting waiting on somebody to bring it to you and that's why you in the situation that you're in today he bring it to you and give it to you for whatever price he decide he want to put on it because I can tell you where it came from cost practically nothing. They burn dope over there because it's piling up and they can't get rid of it. Understand that. Have you ever been to a cocaine factory in Columbia? Most people haven't. But you have the fat man, Eddie Jackson, who was that type of legend who had to go to the factories in cocaine. And let me tell you one other thing before I go. Eddie Jackson was such a legend. He had his mind intent on getting him a farm in Afghanistan because he wanted to learn how to grow and process opium poppy. He wanted to learn how to grow it and how to process it because he knew that's the man who was on top over there in Afghanistan who owns the opium poppy and farm. But us as brothers 
don't have those kind of imaginations that we would get us a farm over there in Afghanistan and grow opium poppy and learn how to process opium poppy. When you go down to the game and you want to go all the way to the beginning of it, it starts over there in the Middle East where they're growing opium poppy because you can't get it without it. All of your pills need opium poppy. So understand this, and here's another one for you all, just so you understand. George Bush, after we had raided Afghanistan, <clears throat> George Bush and Dick Cheney get the bright idea that they're going to burn all the opium poppy fields. So they could proceed, proceed to burn a opium poppy field. Let me show you how powerful the tribes are over there in Afghanistan. And this is like the war was like a year old. So now all of a sudden the bushes, we're going to burn the opium poppy because that's bad. The Afghans over there, they burnt one or two fields. And the Afghans got together in such a large number and told them if they burn another opium poppy field, they would be through. They told America if they burn another opium poppy field, they would never ever think about winning the war because the whole country was going to come down on America. Now you only had 150,000 troops. You fighting the Taliban and now you finna fight the whole country over burning opium poppy. And George Bush and Dick Cheney did not burn another opium poppy field after. They told them, if you burn another one, I will rain hell down on you Americans and you American soldiers like you have never seen. And America did not want that. So they did not burn any more opium poppy fields. And if you want to look at the story, it is on National Geographic's how America went over there thinking they was going to burn opium poppy fields. And those farmers over there put a stop to that after they burnt one or two fields and let them know you're going to be fighting every farmer over here, every Taliban soldier, and there is no win for you if you burn opium poppy fields. So you can imagine what George Bush and Dick Cheney did because that's when your opium poppy started flowing. That's when all the pills started flowing on the streets. All the Oxycontins, all of that picked up steam because what you don't realize, America took over some of those opium poppy fields and used it to get opium poppy to sell to you. Understand that you really don't realize your own American government had fields over there harvesting opium poppy. Your United States government had fields and land in Afghanistan processing opium poppy. Look at it on National Geographic's from back in that day, the opium poppy. That is Afghan and Pakistan's them biggest outsourced product is opium poppy. Whether you use it to make pills or you use it for hair rind or you use it to make that cough syrup that y'all like so much. Codeine. If you like codeine, you like it. Understand that and they was not having America burning they opium poppy fields and America didn't know that they was in trouble when they burnt them fields but they found out awful quick quicker than your head will spin they found out if they burn an opium poppy field them and their American soldiers would have never been over there for 20 years. They would have closed that war out if they had to continue burning opium poppy fields in Afghanistan within a heartbeat. And just realize that George Bush them really didn't want to burn it. They wanted to control it. Understand the white man's thought. He didn't want to burn it. He just wanted to control it. He wanted the wealth from the opium poppy. And look at America now. Look at America now. Look at America now. Oxycontin. All of these pills, stop signs, old panels, everything you can name came to you. Compliments 
of Afghanistan and your American government still in the poppy fields and processing the poppy for themselves for you all to consume in all of these pills that they feeding you. And I just want to say one more thing to all of you brothers who happen to say. Why do you keep blaming a white man for everything? Why do you keep blaming a white man for everything? Well, let me ask all of you brothers who have that opinion. Who's been running the country the whole time? Who took it upon themselves to get ships and come all the way over to Africa to kidnap and enslave us? So now we're supposed to be like what the white man, oh, let's just forget about that now. Times didn't change. No, they have not. You have no wealth. You are sitting up here poor and broke 400 years later after being enslaved and you got niggas here hollering color don't matter tell white folks color don't matter and let me answer one more question about this color don't matter for all of you who it ain't black and white well let me give y'all one more ted koppel i'm sure you all know who ted koppel is he had a program on and he asked white folks if it was a mistake made and you are white, but you were supposed to be black, and we turn you back to being black, how much money would it take you to go back to being black? Every one of these white people in this survey, they showed it on national TV, Ted Koppel, so pull it up and look at it for yourself. Every white person said if, they, if, if it was a mistake and they had to go from white to being black, they asked for tremendous amounts of money. I need 10 million. I need 20 million. I need 30 million. And at the end of the show, in the debate, Ted Koppel asked a question. And I'm going to ask all of America this question. And Ted Koppel, ask it first. Look it up on Nightline for yourself. He asked white folks, since you all feel if it was a mistake made and you had to be black, you need 20, 30, 40, 50, all these astral number sums of money. He said, why don't you feel black people deserve reparation? If you had to be black, you need 20 and 30 million. But you don't feel black people who have been mistreated, enslaved, bought to America in shackles and chain. If they are free now, they don't deserve anything. But if you was black and they turned you from white to black, you want 40 million. But for us black people, you Mitch McConnell and all you Caucasian people, you feel we don't deserve anything. You ought to look at that Tad Koppel show because it was a very interesting show to see how you all feel if you became black, you need this amount of money. But you feel we black, we don't need anything. That is a disgrace and ridiculous thinking on any part. If you feel you white right now and we turn you back to black and you got to have $100 million, why you don't think we deserve anything and we built this country? Do you understand that? With shackles, chains, and whips on our back, we built this country and you still don't feel we deserve anything. But if you are white, and God made a mistake and turned you back to black, he got to give you $100 million because that's what you feel it takes to be black. But we are black and you feel totally opposite. That show you the hypocrisy of all people thinking. All these white folks on the show name ridiculous amounts of money, and I would like you all to go back and review that Nightline show with Ted Koppel, where he asked them all, if you were black and God told you I made a mistake, now you are white and I got to turn you back black to what you were supposed to be. And he asked, what would you need? And they named ridiculous sums of money is what they would need. But they don't feel we deserve any reparation for being enslaved, being kidnapped, Bought to America in shackles and chains. And you black people keep saying, how you going to keep blaming white folks? Well, let me ask every black person who says that. We've had one president in 400 years, and they wouldn't let him do anything he wanted to do. He gave them health care, the best thing 
America to ever had, and they hate him for giving them health care. So you tell me if black don't matter, why does it matter so much to white people?